he was talking about how when he gets off the phone with a seller lead, he sends the agreement. Um, maybe they said yes, maybe they didn't. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking he's talking about the ones that were somewhat agreeable and he sends the agreement and then he never hears from them again. That's what we call ghosting you. <laughs> so I want to talk about this because I want to clear up some confusion about the paperwork. Okay. Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? I want shut up money. What do you want? Okay, because I think this is where some of you are going wrong a little bit. Let me, um, let me jump into share screen here and I'll check the chat here. Yeah, okay. Good advice, Aisha. Victor, good to see you here. All right, we're sharing screens. I'm going to go over here to my, uh, sorry, I've got to move some bars out of the way so I can get to the, all right, here's the course, Lease Options 2.0. You guys have seen this before. If you're in the VIP, you have this. On Wednesday, that's, two, that's tomorrow, I'm planning on this having a facelift. It's getting a facelift, okay? <laughs> and what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to find the files easier. It's going to put everything right here on this page for you for the most part so you can find things easier. But if you slide down to the module that talks about how to call leads and get deals and you click this button, the outsource button, it'll open up a Google Drive folder and, and this is what it looks like. Inside, there's a couple more training videos and there's a couple folders. One folder says agreements and propaganda and the other folder says VA pre-qualify and closers phone scripts, okay? What I wanna talk about today is this agreements and propaganda folder. If you click that button and you go into that folder, this is what it looks like. Um, inside, there's a video explanation on how to fill out the flex option agreement memo, the seller lease option agreement memo, sorry. And that is what most of us are sending out, okay? Now, I want to be clear on this and how I do it, okay? This is the lease option agreement memo. There is also this document, which is the info for homeowner packet. You're supposed to edit this up, make it look good. This is information. This is propaganda for your seller leads. Okay. Now, when do you send that or when do you send the lease option agreement memo? And I think this is where some disconnects are coming with seller leads. All right. To be 100% transparent in my business, when I'm on the phone or one of my guys is on the phone with a seller lead and the seller is on the fence, not committal, would think about it, but needs to talk about it with their spouse, needs to pray on it, needs to blah, 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 non-committal, still a giant maybe, okay? I will not send them the contract. I will not send them the lease option agreement memo. Okay. I will not because they're non-committal. This is for serious prospects. Okay. I will not send this to them until I know for sure on the phone, they have told me, and you guys have heard me role play this that if I put this stuff in the agreement, like we've discussed and I send it to them, they have no problem signing it and us moving forward today. Okay. Sometimes that's the second call. Sometimes it's the third call, but regardless of what number of call I'm on, I will not send this until I have that firm commitment. Okay. <clears throat> now, if they are in the position of not committing, they're not firm. I won't send them this. Instead, I'll send them this. This is the info for homeowner, okay? 
This is just more propaganda. This keeps my name, my picture, my logo, and my contact information right in front of them. Okay. I have had homeowner leads call me back six months, up to 12 months later. <laughs> I talk about my brother sometimes. He's had them call 18 months later after not working it out on the phone, click hang up 18 months later, that same seller lead calls you back. Okay. Why? Because you sent them this. All right. They still have it. They saved it in a file folder and some kind of category in their email. So they could remember that guy that made that offer. This is the last case, you know, last uh, possible scenario for me. I've exhausted all my other options. What was that guy's name and number? Let's go back and look at that. Okay, it's happened to me. It's happened to anybody that's been in the business for a while, all right, if you are putting this out there. But I only send this if they are uninterested in doing something today. But I do not attach the contract to it, okay? I do not send the contract with this. I just send this to my uninterested prospects. Now, if they are interested... I will send them, if they, they've committed, they're re ready to do something with me today, then I will send them the seller's lease option agreement memo without the info for homeowner packet I was just showing you. They're going to get one or the other. Either they're uninterested and they get the info for homeowner packet, or they are someone we're moving forward and I'm sending them agreement without that packet. Now, why do I do that? Because if I send them, I've learned this, if I send the packet along with the agreement, it just brings up more distractions, stalls, questions. Ugh. Okay. That's not what I want at this stage. I want them to look at the agreement that has the information in it that we discussed over the phone and see that it's just real simple to do. All they have to do is sign. That's it. I don't want to add any more confusion, okay? So if you guys are sending out these documents in an other uh, format, other type of procedure, that's not what I'm doing, okay? So one more thing about this. Um, in some cases, you will have a homeowner or a lead that you've contacted that is savvy, sophisticated, um, smart, intelligent, um, maybe more prosperous than others, okay? More educated, has more money, has a better career, okay? These folks that are a little bit above average, you might say in a lot of ways, okay? You also will run into average people that will say, I want my attorney to look at this, okay? I want my attorney to look at this, send the agreement, me and my attorney will go over it and we'll get back to you. How many of you have heard that? And then you never hear back from them. If I suspect that I'm dealing with one of these sophisticated homeowners <clears throat> or I suspect there's a realtor or a broker friend or an attorney or some legal professional that's going to be involved in helping them make the decision. Then I don't send either one of those. Okay. I won't send the info for homeowner packet and I won't send the flex option, the lease option agreement memo. I won't send either one. What do I send that sophisticated buyer? Okay, I'm going to share screens with you again and show it to you. In that same folder where we have the seller lease option agreement memo, we also have the info for homeowner packet and a video explaining how to fill that out. I have in there now, it's been a recent addition. It's called the revised standard lease and option document. Okay, I'm just going to click on this. And you can see this is a more beefy lease option agreement to, to enter in with your seller, okay? More beefy. It's more, this was written by an attorney, okay? So it has more details to it than the 
lease option agreement memo. The lease option agreement memo is almost a handshake agreement, okay? Very country boy, very, very simple, one page, boom, 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 bullet points, signature, we're gone. You know, we're doing the deal. Okay, now here's, here's a more beefy contract. And if you get the sense from your conversation that that person is a more sophisticated, more educated, more prosperous, or they have legal counsel, or they have some other type of real estate professional licensed counselor that's helping them. This is what I send guys. And I don't send the info for homeowner packet along with this either. I'll just send the residential lease with option to purchase agreement. And you can see it has all of the same stuff that the lease option agreement memo does, the fixed term, the rent, um, but it adds in a lot of these other details the lease option agreement memo leaves off, like utilities, buyer tenant inspections, um, notification of serious building problems, damage, lockouts. This is starting to look more like a lease agreement, right? So this is much more beefy. Uh, this is much more... Um, what do they call it? Like highfalutin? <laughs> I don't know. Is, is, that, is that a proper description for this? It's more highfalutin um, contract. All right. Option consideration, exercise of option. You can see it goes on. This is a more beefy. All right. So if I'm dealing with somebody that says they're going to take my document to an attorney and have them look at it, then I want to use a more beefy document. And that's located inside that course now. Also posted it in the private VIP group. So uh, we want to provide everything that you need here to do these deals, guys. Now, what I'm thinking is, is sometimes your sellers are ghosting you. One, because you didn't tie them down real good on the phone. Okay. You guys, we'll, we can role play this. Okay. Either you didn't tie them down real good on the phone or two, you sent them the info for homeowner packet with the agreement and they got confused they got more questions and more concerned or you sent them the the seller lease option agreement memo and this was somebody that was going to really look at it through uh, an attorney's type eyes does this make sense what i'm saying so you want to give the homeowner what they'll be comfortable with and i've had other students come to me and say hey listen uh, this homeowner, he, I sent, he, he was a good conversation. I sent the flex option, the seller lease option agreement memo to him. And, and then I called him back in a couple days. I hadn't heard from him. He answered the phone and he said, yeah, that document looked like a joke. Like it didn't have anything in it. Like it was just bullet points and some signatures. Okay. Now I have a rebuttal for that. Yes, Mr. Homeowner. You're absolutely right. It's just a permission slip for you and I to get started. You can see that it binds you in no way whatsoever. If you want me to put somebody in that house and take care of this payment issue for you, then I just need your permission. And that's just a permission slip. Very, very simple thing. If you're looking for something more beefy, sir, I definitely have that. And I would be more than happy to send that to you if you would like to take a look at that. I am more interested in you and in the property than I am in what the paperwork looks like. So paperwork, I'm not hung up on. Does that make sense, Mr. Homeowner, or maybe not? That's my rebuttal to that, okay? So, but if you know reading the phone that that person is one of these types, then you can just send them that more beefy, okay? Why do I not lead with the beefy stuff? Well, for one, it's it's beefier, but it's not as clear to understand, okay? So I want you to have the option, which one you wanna send out, okay? Make sure though, this is not a relief from tying them down on the phone, <laughs> making sure they're committed. You guys have heard me talk about this, strengthening the clothes, right? strengthen the close just because they said yes yeah, send me the agreement doesn't mean you're done okay so mr homeowner what you're saying is is if i put this information down in the agreement and i send it to you um 
you're prepared to go ahead and do business business with me today. Is that correct? 